Hallelujah. Now, um, how to discover? Many people, they have spiritual gifts and they haven't, haven't discovered. And they might discover, but then they don't build up. And then after they build up, they might not use it. So we want to help people to discover our spiritual gifts and then build it up and then also use it for our ministry, for our life. Does, you know, people don't have to be um, ministers to use the spiritual gifts. We can be lay people. Lay people, uh, we can be using our spiritual gifts for our, uh, how we glorify God and do witnesses anytime. So this is something every Christian should do. Okay, now first point is, God gladly gives us spiritual gifts. Now, I have emphasized that my teaching is, uh, always has this God's nature Bible study method and preaching method. I always talk about God's nature, His goodness, His grace, His blessings to us, His plan to bless us, and what He did, what He has to do in order to bless us. So when we talk about spiritual gifts, I always talk about God wants to give the spiritual gifts. Now, I have heard of many people, uh, they went to some special meetings and then they, they want the evangelist to lay hand on them and then receive certain spiritual gifts. Uh, now, it's true that uh, they can receive anointing, they can receive help, but it doesn't, it's not the evangelist who gives us the spiritual gifts is God. Uh, actually, the anointing too can go away from meeting. You know, that in a meeting, people can experience the Holy Spirit can receive spiritual gifts that God has planned for them. But it's still for the person to keep it every day and use it, you know, and practice it and use it. So, we understand spiritual gifts don't come from people, but some people, they will spend time going from one meeting to another in order to receive spiritual gifts. We should think of spending time with God instead of going to so many meetings. Spending time with God to receive the spiritual gifts. Okay, in Mark 16 verse 15 on, now if you can hear me or if you have a problem hearing me, please send me a message so that I can know it's going on fine. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So this is Jesus telling us to preach the gospel. It's, uh, so this would be good from Jesus' time to the end of the world. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So this is the gospel, uh, that they believe and then they will be saved. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will dis recover. So here it talks about that uh, until the end of the world, while we preach the gospel, that Jesus said these signs will follow those who believe. That Everyone who believes will have these miracles to follow them, to cast out demons. That means every Christian has authority and the spiritual gift to cast out demons. But some people have stronger spiritual gift to cast out demons. Some people have weaker spiritual gifts, but still everyone has spiritual gifts. And the more they use it, the stronger it will be. So if we spend more time praying and handling problems in our life, we'll be able to cast out demons more effectively, and it's for every Christian. If every Christian does that, they will have a big ministry. But many people just depend on the pastor. Now why is that so? Why is that so? And so many people that demons are not driven out yet, because they don't take care of the problems, they always worry, they, they don't have a good relationship with God, so they don't have strength, and so they, uh, and because of the sins, they are attacked by the evil spirit. So I hope that we'll more of us will believe that we can have this power. You know, the coronavirus is spreading fast and it's actually is rising up. The curve is rising up. And it's sad to see that. And I hope you all protect 
yourself with the help of God and be careful to keep a distance from people and to wear masks. The most important thing is to wear masks while you're outside the home and to keep a distance from people. And uh, uh, there are so many people who catch it because even in Hong Kong now, there is an uh, increase. You know, for a while it has stopped, but now it has gone up again. There are some ways that people are not aware that the virus is spreading. So be very careful. Uh, don't go to places where there are many people and don't go to crowded, pe crowded places and don't mix with the crowd. Uh, if you need to go buy food, buy it when there are not so many people. And, and if you see people crowding there, don't stand close. Stay a distance from them. Uh, and also be very careful when you touch your eyes. When you touch something that touch your eyes, this virus will go into your body too. So, you know, I pray that you all will be kept safe from the virus. And this is a sign of the end time. It's a warning sign. This one is not yet entering the seven seals. Because the seven seals, it says that one quarter of the population of the world would die. It's not coming to that point yet. And, uh, but yet it's still it's more serious than any other uh, recent sickness that we know of. So, it's, so we need that um, faith in God and have the power of the Holy Spirit that we can cast out demons and also have the power to lay hands on people to be healed. And Jesus promised to all people. So that means Jesus wants us all to have this power. So I hope that we all believe that. God wants us to have this uh, anointing of the Holy Spirit so we can serve God effectively. And then uh, verse 20, I did not quote that. That says that the signs will follow the disciples to confirm the word. The purpose of the miracles are to confirm the word of God. Okay, and then Jesus' victory and He g gladly gives us spiritual gifts. Spir Ephesians 4, 4, 8. He ascended on high. He led cap captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Here it says that God ascended, Jesus ascended on high and He led the, you know, He, he kept, the, uh, He captured Satan. He defeated Satan and He can give gifts to men. So it's like this person here, He has, all different kinds of gifts that we can have spiritual gifts that he wants to he wants to give to us so if we have a close relationship with God we'll have the spiritual gifts and God gives us spiritual gifts uh, supernatural spiritual gifts in 1st Corinthians chapter 12 here it talks about spiritual gifts and and uh, here are many prof uh, supernatural spiritual gifts although Spiritual gifts can be not so supernatural, like playing the piano or administration. But here, Paul quotes mainly the supernatural gifts, the word of wisdom, that people will be able to say words of wisdom uh, that they don't normally have, words of knowledge that they know things that they normally don't know. And faith, here would not be just saving faith, but the faith to believe that God can perform miracles and a gift of healing that we can pray for healing the more we pray and the more we pray for people the more healing we'll see in history if you look up uh, uh, this um, is supernatural and also um, God's general God's generals there are different people in history that has great uh, power of healing for instance uh, Catherine Kuhlman I saw her meeting, but I did not receive her laying hand on me. And uh, there was one person called uh, Leonardo uh, Roberts, Roberts Leonardo. Uh, he, he was in a meeting when he was a kid, in a meeting of uh, Catherine Kuhlman. And then she saw a nun came into the place with uh, sitting on wheelchair and the wheelchair now, now, Leonardo now is uh, a pastor, has been a pastor for a long time, and he has written the book, God's Generals. 
of different people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and full of power in the ministry. And, um, and he himself, you know, is a, is a minister, is a powerful minister. And then he, he was in a meeting and he saw the nun come in and on wheelchair and also the, the hands were bent. And then in the meeting, she saw actually Catherine Kuhlman was not laying hand on her. She was just in a meeting and Catherine Kuhlman was laying, you know, leading the people to praise God, to worship God. And then she started to pray for healing. And then she saw this nun. The hand started to move and the bones start to crack that he could hear the sound that the hand opened up, opened up, and then he could hear the sound of the bone opening up, cracking. And then she was sitting on a wheelchair and then she started to stand up she, with difficulty. And then she started to stand up and then finally she could walk. And so Leonardo witnessed this himself. He saw this himself. Leonardo went to heaven himself too. He experienced um, when he went into the river of life, he experienced uh, the, the love of God entering him. He said when you enter any water, nothing enter you, your body. But then when he entered the river of life, there was joy and love entering him uh, the, from the living water. And he was very impressed with that. And also he was sitting uh, on a couch in a house. And then she, he found that, you know, when you sit on any couch on earth, sometimes you will shift to, you know, to find a more comfor comfortable place. But on that couch, he found that the couch fit nicely with his body and he did not have to move to fit his body, move his body. It was all comfortable. And uh, he also played water with Jesus. Uh, in the river of life. And some people said, how dare you play water, pour water onto Jesus? And he said, Jesus started it. And because Jesus played with him, so he, he said, from that day on, Jesus became his friend. So he was, his life was totally changed. It was a, he was a kid. But when Jesus played with him, he, he realized that Jesus can play with little kids. And so he recorded this healing of Catherine Kuhlman and other people. And there are some other people and there are many videos online uh, that you look up God's generals, you'll find these videos. It's, it's supernatural. And in Africa, you have more chance to see uh, miracles because there are more people uh, having demons. So it's easier for you to to exercise driving out demons from people. But first you have to be clean, have a close relationship with God and to be cleaned of evil spirit and sins and worries and believe that God is in control of everything. Everything is in God's hand. So we don't have to worry about anything. Many people worry and say, oh, I have no money. But the Bible says that seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. And you know, what is prepared for those who love Him? When we love God, what is prepared for us are things that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and the hearts have not thought of. So God will prepare for us things that we never imagined. So we hope that you all believe that you can have this supernatural power with you, that you have the gift of healing and working on miracles and, and prophecy, that uh, we can all hear from God. We all hear from God when we sin. We hear God moving our heart to repentance. And when we read the Bible and hear messages, that we can hear God telling us uh, to turn away from sin and how to obey God. And the discerning of spirits, that some people will receive this gift, that they can discern evil spirit, and also different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. So I hope that we all hunger for that. And Paul never said that these gifts will stop. Paul never said that. These gifts will follow us all the days until the end of the world. And then, uh, first I want to explain being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because many people 
they think that being filled with the Holy Spirit is something very difficult, very mystical. But actually, to me, because the Holy Spirit is God, being filled with the Holy Spirit means having a very intimate relationship with God, have a close relationship with God. That is being filled with the Holy Spirit. And then this person will turn away from sin. It's not just a one-time experience. Just going to meetings doesn't mean we are filled with the Holy Spirit. It just experienced the Holy Spirit at that time. It's not being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is continuous. And then turning, uh, and then following God's will, especially the Great Commission, that is obeying God in every way, especially the Great Commission to preach the gospel and teach, everyone, teach people to obey everything Jesus has taught us. First, we obey everything Jesus has taught us. It's for our benefit. When we obey God, when we love God, then God prepare for us things we never imagined. So I hope that we'll say, yes, I want to obey God and preach the gospel and teach people to obey God. First, we obey God. And in all this teaching, all these things, I have experienced it myself. I obey God. I, I try my best to obey God in every, every way. When God moves me to do something, then I will do it because it's God's will. Then I obey God. I hope you will say, yes, we can do it. Now, in another session, we talk about how to overcome sins. Whenever we have sinful thoughts, we realize it's, first we're aware of the sinful thoughts, and then we realize it's destructive. And then what does the Bible tell us to do? And then number four, pray for forgiveness and for strength. And number five, choose to obey. Whenever any sinful thought comes, right away turn away from the sinful thought and obey God right away. And then dedicate our lives to God. That being filled with the Holy Spirit means the whole person is dedicated to God. Some people just want experience. Then they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is a continuous relationship with God. And then doing things to glorify God, to, for God's glory and not our own glory. So it's always glorifying God, saying, God is so wonderful, hallelujah, God is wonderful. Now Catherine Kuhlman is one person who is very... Uh, he, that I really like her because she always talk about God is so wonderful, the Holy Spirit is wonderful, don't offend my friend, the Holy Spirit. Don't offend him, he's my friend. He, she has such a close relationship with God that she doesn't want anyone to offend God. And uh, people went to her meeting and say, she's talking about the Holy Spirit as if this is her closest friend and we too can have this close relationship with God. Thank you, Lord, that we can have such a close relationship with God. And then we'll be filled more and more with the Holy Spirit, and then our spiritual gifts will become stronger and stronger. First, God's will is that all Christians will be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive supernatural spiritual gifts. That's God's heart. Acts 2.17, you know, some people say, no, just for some people, but the Bible says it's for all. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh, all people. All people who believe in Jesus, you can receive this. But many people didn't know that, and many people didn't love God, and they didn't dedicate their life to God, so they don't experience the Holy Spirit. And some people pray much, but they don't lead people to experience God. They don't lead people to Worship God, that's one way we help people to experience the Holy Spirit. And another way is lay hands on people, but many people don't do that. And then, so He wants to fill all flesh. Of course, it's all Christians who can receive that. All Christians can have the Holy Spirit to fill us. It's, this is not just the, uh, the, uh, the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but the infilling of the Holy Spirit, that we can, can be filled with the Holy Spirit more. I would picture it like this, it's like a, a container that every Christian has the Holy Spirit, but some people have very low level. And then the more, the closer we are to God, the stronger we have the presence of God, will rise stronger. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will go higher. But there's still a degree. We need to continue to build up our relationship with God. And then what happens is when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy shall prophesy and um, that they will receive words from God and then they will see visions and dream dreams that God will guide them. Now for me, I don't, you know, when I pray for people, I don't receive many uh, direction about the person, but I receive many direction about teaching. That's 
my spiritual gift that God gave me teaching how to apply the truth to the to my life and to other people's life and we all will find the spiritual gift God wants to give us okay now each person has different spiritual gifts we should work together with other Christians to build up the church that we cannot be like another person we don't need to be like another person we just want to be the person God wants us to be each person has a different spiritual gift first Corinthians 12 verse 11 but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills so the Holy Spirit gives us the spiritual gifts according to his will and some people say well maybe God doesn't want to give me spiritual gifts but the point is he wants to use everyone everyone is in his special plan he wants to give you a spiritual gift when you hunger for God when you love God he will give the spiritual gifts to you although some people have stronger gifts it's like a parable of the five talents two talents and one talent but each person will have spiritual gifts and the more we use it the more the stronger it will be and also the more we are filled with the Holy Spirit the stronger we will receive the spiritual gifts so it's according to God's will and his will is the best we need to believe that God's will is the best now some people they figure God's will like this it's like you know like if someone is uh, having uh, serious sickness and then they're about to die and they pray the person still doesn't recover then they say well I guess it's God's will and thinking of God's will is like the last resort God's will is not the last resort God's will is the best for us if we follow God's will our life will go higher and higher and a person's life will not be wasted so I hope that we we'll all believe if I enter God's will it's the best thing that can happen to me and then different question, Christians have different gifts each person is important in God's kingdom 1 Corinthians 12 16 and if the ear should say because I'm not an eye I'm not of the body is it therefore not of the body now the you know the your eye cannot say I'm not you know uh, the ear cannot say I'm not of eyes therefore I'm, I don't belong belong to the body everyone has this importance 17 if the whole body were an eye where would be the hearing if the whole were hearing where would be the smelling 21 and the eye cannot say to the hand I have no need of you nor again the head to the feet I have no need of you that you know if the whole body is all preachers then where are the other people who do other things we all we need different body parts that's God's wisdom he planned for each person to have a different gift and then each person cannot say to other person I don't need you because you're not an I you are not a preacher you're not an evangelist we cannot say that and and we should pay attention that we don't say or oh, this person is higher that one is lower every person who loves God is very very high and very important we should be happy if another Christian is honored. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So we should be happy if a Christian is blessed by God and has strong spiritual gifts that we don't have. And if a person is suffering, then we should suffer with them. So we, if someone has strong spiritual gift, he pray for someone and they're healed, then we say, wow, I thank God for you and we want to pray for the person to bless more people and we want to work together with person so that we can bring more people in the kingdom of God so if we all build up each other then God is happy and God will give you more spiritual gifts but many people want to compete when they think of spiritual gifts they say I want to have a very strong spiritual gift stronger than his we don't have to compare we don't have to compare we just build up what you have each person is different so uh, please be aware of that we want to be happy of if other people have spiritual gifts and they are used by God okay we it's very important that we set priorities in life so that we uh, God is pleased with us so that he will give us what we uh, what is best for us okay and uh, first is we build up a strong relationship with God this is the first most important thing to build up a strong relationship with God number two bear fruit of the Holy Spirit so the life will bear fruit have joy and love and peace patience kindness and then 
we want to do it to people, to love and bless people. Because people who don't care about people won't receive the spiritual gifts. We want to bless people. And then fulfill our different responsibilities, our different responsibilities, take care of the family, do our work well, uh, everything we do well. And then fifth, serve God in our life and our ministry. So serve God is after we have the strong relationship with God and have a fruitful life with peace and joy and love and then love and bless people and fulfill our responsibilities and then we serve God. Actually, when we do all the other things, we also serve God. But some people think of, well, I serve God for first, but I forget about the, uh, the relationship with God. I forget about blessing other people. Some people just want to serve God and don't care about people. We want to care about people. Ministry is about caring about other people. And some people, they want to serve God, but they don't want to take care of their family. We need to take care of our family so that there is no uh, opening in our home for the devil to come in. How to discover our spiritual gifts? First, we can start with things we naturally want to do. A lot of times people naturally want to do certain things and those are very likely connected with his spiritual gifts. Some people have musical sense. They're born with musical sense. Then very likely that he could do something with music. And then now when he has spiritual uh, musical gifts doesn't mean that he only do, does music. He can do other things too. And some people want to care for people. They have a natural tendency to want to care for people so this could be his strength and then some people want to share what God has done in their lives they want to keep sharing about uh, what God has done so they have a spiritual gift of sharing some people want to do evangelism to save people so some people want to share God's message to be uh, preachers and some people want to do planning some people want to pray for other people so we start with things that are natural to us and then steps to discover our spiritual gifts so how do we discover our spiritual gifts first love God and have a close relationship with God this is the foundation of all and then be filled with the Holy Spirit so love God more to be filled with the Holy Spirit I'll talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit in a moment and then obey God's Word if we sin, then we cannot have the, uh, the, our life cannot be used by God. And then have compassion on people, love people. And then receive training on spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts need training. For instance, my preaching. I've watched different preachers. I learned from different preachers. I learned how to flow from my heart to preach. How to preach with feelings, not just shouting, not just yelling, but to preach with feelings. That you can see my voice would change sometimes it's more excited sometimes it's softer so it's not just always yelling I heard people preaching this from beginning to end it's always yelling 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 we don't want you know sometimes we want to be more gentle and convey more feelings and then they need to practice helping people when they practice helping people using the spiritual gifts then it will become more obvious what spiritual gifts they have and then operate in the spiritual gifts. For instance, uh, uh, when they pray, lay hands on people, when they uh, receive messages from God, then, but then all this they need to talk to the pastors first to get approval from the pastor because uh, some people have very weak Christian life. They should first work on this, the spiritual life before they start to use their spiritual gifts to bless people. And then number eight, see, seek God's strategy in our life spiritual gifts they need strategy so that we can use it to the maximum at this time I seek God's strategy that I can bless more people in more countries and that is God's strategy okay now so that was first how to discover spiritual gifts and now how to build up our spiritual gifts and the most important in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 is that even if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So if people can do a lot of things but no love, then it's nothing. But have not love, I am nothing at the bottom here. So very important to build up the spiritual gifts is have love and appreciation of other people and, and uh, care about other people and 
and and want to bless other people. The more we want to bless people, the more spiritual gifts we'll receive. That will be, be receive uh, strong spiritual gifts. When I want to bless people, uh, after I experience the Holy Spirit, then God opened a way for me to go to different countries, and God gives me has given me before the uh, the uh, the gift of language, uh, that I speak three languages uh, smoothly, and uh, also how to understand the Bible, how to preach the Bible in a way that people can understand and apply to the life in a practical way and also pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and also play the piano and the guitar and lead singing to lead people to enter the presence of God and uh, encourage people, raise up people to serve God. All this God has given me and I thank God for that. And in the process, actually, when I first became a Christian, I already started to evangelize. I told people about Jesus. I was very zealous. So it's, it's God changing me so that I am suitable to serve God. And we need to learn to worship in spirit and in truth in order to experience the Holy Spirit and have a stronger relationship with God. So Jesus said, you know, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. And worship in spirit include worship with our soul and with our spirit. The soul would include mind, will, and feeling. So please remember these three words. Mind, our mind, our thinking. So the thinking agrees with the Bible and God's will. I agree that God is the best. I agree God's will is the best. God has wants to give the best to us. God is not, you know, mean. He doesn't hold back the gifts. He wants to give me great things. So my mind agrees that God is the best. God's will is the best. When I obey God, it's the best. And will, I want to follow God and obey God. You know, I thank God at, at this age, I'm still strong to uh, to. Uh, serve God. I'm already, you know, two months more, I'll be 69 years old. Now I tell you, the point is that God still gives me strength, so we all can have strength. That that God give me strength that, you know, most people my age would not be having this strength and still having this ability. So I hope that you see that God will bless you. And even at this age, I want to dedicate my life to God. I don't want to stop serving. I want to serve until I die. Even on my deathbed, I want to pray for people. When people come to me, I'll pray for them and encourage them. This flowing out from me, the Holy Spirit flowing out from me to want to bless people. I hope you have this heart. When you have this heart, God is very happy with you and God will bless you. And build up positive feelings toward God. When I think of God, I really like Him. I say, Lord, you're so wonderful. You create my body so wonderful. You create my life so wonderful. You create the universe so beautiful. You create food so delicious. You work in our life in such a wonderful way. You have uh, drawn us to You even though when we sin, You still draw us to You. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. You're always wonderful. I love You. I like You. Now, for me, the prayer that we can pray all day long is to like God. Oh God, I like you. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> when we like God, we can be filled with the, with the Holy Spirit easily. So the feeling toward God, I like God. I love God. I want to be with God. I enjoy God. You know, there is no one like God. There is no one like God who can bless us. So we want to really enjoy God. And then our whole life will go higher and higher. And then worship with our spirit. It's hard to discern the spirit, but to say the whole person, the whole inner being, being worship God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. My whole person worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So if we worship with the whole person, don't just worship with the mind, but worship with the will and the feeling and the spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. All day long, worship Lord, the Lord. And then three kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The prayer of grace to declare God is loving me, God is blessing me, God is helping me, God is with me. So I hope you remember these three kinds of prayer that I've talked about before already. Second prayer of worship that I want to worship God is from me to God. I worship you, I love you, I like you, I, I come close to you. And the third is the interactive prayer. Whenever I pray, I know that God is happy with me. God will respond to me. God will respond to my, to my needs. God will help me. God will strengthen me. 
So every time we pray, we say, God is blessing me, God is helping me, hallelujah. I can enjoy God anytime. And then how to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually so that our spiritual gifts will become stronger. First, repent and turn away from all sins because that God hates sins. So if we have sins, then God doesn't fill us. And also, even when we serve God, God is not pleased with us if we stay in sin. So if we notice we have lust, we have selfishness, we have hatred for people, dislike of people, we have despise of people, we don't have compassion on people, we just want power, we want to control people, we argue with people. If we have any, any problem and or we don't love God, we don't like God, we don't have a close relationship with God. All these are sins. We Not just repentance. Some people say they repent. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. But we need to turn away from the sin and say no to the sins and obey God and love God. And the positive sign of holiness is the strong relationship with God. It's not just turning away from sin. It's a strong relationship with God. And then love and follow the Bible. You notice I always talk about the Bible. The Bible gives us promises, give us assurance, and give us wisdom. And believe that God wants to fill us. He wants to. He wants to. He wants to fill us. He wants to use our life. And then for spend long hours loving God and praying and hungering for God. I want God. Hallelujah. I want you to fill me. I want to love you. I want to be used by you. I want you to guide me. I want you to be my master and my Lord. And then obey God in every area, especially the Great Commission. I want to obey you in every way. And number six, take care of problems in our life. If we have negative emotions, negative emotions, we cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. If we have negative thinking, we cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we want to take care of problems in our life. Or if we have problems in, in relationship with people, we cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the laying on of hands by a Spirit-filled person and spirit, uh, will help. And spirit-filled meetings are helpful, but you cannot depend on them because you have to go home and keep praying. If we just depend on that, that we won't be filled with the Holy Spirit. So remember this. Turn away from all sins. Love and follow the Bible. Believe that God wants to fill us. Spend a long time praying and loving and hungering for God. Obeying God in every way, especially the Great Commission. Take care of problems and laying on hands and spirit-filled meetings and have a strong hunger for spiritual gifts. Here is Elisha, 2 Kings 2.9. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken, taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. So here, Elisha hunger for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And then Elijah said, this is hard thing. It's not easy. And if you see me when I'm t taken from you, then it will be given to you. If not, you won't get it. So here is, if he really set his eye on Elijah, really looking up, you know, to him and be aware that he's taken, taken away. Then he's concentrated. He's really hungering for God's blessing through Elijah. When he can look at Elijah all the time, when he's taken away, then he will receive it. So we want to set our eyes on Jesus. We want to concentrate on Jesus so that we'll receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit stronger and stronger so we can be used by God. Hallelujah. So how to use our spiritual gifts? First, the spiritual gifts give us, the infill of the Holy Spirit, give us courage to speak God's Word. It's not just for enjoyment. It gives us courage to preach gospel. So, Acts 4.31, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the Word of God with boldness. So, the Holy Spirit wants to bring in courage to speak preach the Word of God. The more you preach the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will also fill you. He will know that you love to preach the Word of God, love to share, then He will fill you with the Holy Spirit stronger and stronger. So this here, see this two picture one? They're both evangelizing on the street. 
And then first, we want to use our spiritual gifts is whatever, do whatever is available to us to serve God. That we see the people around us, care for them. And listen to people and respond to their feelings and needs. So when we see people, we listen and respond to them and help people spiritually. This is very important, not just help them to believe, but help them to uh, grow spiritually. Now in my teachings, you can hear how I lift up the spirit life of people because God is loving you. God has a wonderful plan for you. When you love God, He will raise your life to a higher place. Are you willing to follow God and be blessed by God? When you love God more, your life will go higher and higher and He will prepare for you things you never imagined. So do you want that blessing? So that's how I encourage people spiritually. And also I tell them, wow, it's wonderful that you love God. It's wonderful that you hunger for God. It's wonderful that you obey God. Then God will want to bless you. And then uh, four, do evangelism. Tell people about Jesus. Bring them to believe in Jesus. And pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit. So this is something with the approval of your pastor, you can pray. F Anybody can pray for people. But laying hands on people, you have your pastors to make sure that you don't have evil spirit. So you can lay hands on people to experience the Holy Spirit and for healing and to drive out demons. And then share our testimonies when there is any opportunity. When we... Uh, serve, uh, serve God and then God uses us, then we share our testimonies to encourage other people. So these are ways that we can uh, uh, build up the spiritual life, uh, the spiritual gifts, to care for people, listen to them, respond to them, help them spiritually, do evangelism, pray for them, to experience the Holy Spirit and share our testimonies. And then we need to receive God's guidance. John 10, 24, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Every Christian hears God's voice. When we sin, we hear God's voice telling us to repent. When we listen to sermons and, and, and uh, read the Bible, we hear God telling us to change. And when we see some people, God will tell us how to do evangelism to this person, how to care about this person. So God will talk to us. We want to respond to the voice of God. And then gradually, God will tell us more and more. For me, God gives me many teachings. God teach me how to teach. So for each person, it's different. When you obey God, God will teach you. And I hope we all build on the Word of God. When I talk about the Word of God, I'm always excited. And I talk about God's nature. And I hope you learn this. And then you can use it to, uh, that you can share the Word of God with people. And then you can share your experience. And then one thing, another thing we want to learn is to lay hand. They will lay hand on the sick and they will recover. Now how do we, you know, how do we build up this ability to lay hand on people? First, we build up a, an intimate relationship with God, a strong relationship with God. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and relax and let the joy fill us. Always relax and believe that God is blessing us. And you can, we can start with joy first. We can think of, oh God, is, you're so wonderful. Your heaven is full of joy. I like you. I like you. I'm happy with you. Hallelujah. So start praying with joy. Now for me, the joy just pour, keep pouring out. Uh, after I, I was filled with the Holy Spirit uh, for a period of time, joy started to come. I experienced the joy of the Lord in one meeting. And I, I want to keep that. So when I was going home on that day, I was keep loving God, hallelujah, hallelujah, and the joy keep staying. And, uh, and when I was home, I keep praying. And when, when I woke up the other day, the next day, I keep praying. Every day, I keep praying. And then I, I kept the joy, uh, the spirit of joy in me. So we can start with thinking the good things of God. Ah, so wonderful. <laughs> and be joyful and then pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. And then gradually, will be filled with more and more joy. And joy will take away the burdens and we can be filled with the Holy Spirit more. And then number three, uh, number two, take care of any sins and negative things in our lives because this can bring the evil spirit to come into our lives so we don't want any sin. And then three, if we don't detect any evil spirit, even when we pray for a long time to God, with the approval of our pastor, we can lay hands on people to experience the Holy Spirit. So if we don't experience, we don't detect the evil spirit attacking us, and then we talk to the pastor, and the pastor says it's okay, then we can start laying hands on people, and then your 
ministry will go higher and higher because many people will experience the Holy Spirit when, Holy Spirit when you lay hand on them. And then spend time with a group of people praying to God every day for the stronger presence of God. And then you lay hand on each other to practice. And then you lay hand on, on family members and your friends and then your neighbors and then strangers. And then you see people experience the Holy Spirit. And then you can ask them what they experience and tell them you have experienced God. Do you want God to bless you? Laying on, on the hands can help people to experience the Holy Spirit. So Peter and John place a hand on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. And laying of, on of hands will help people to experience God's peace, freedom, joy, and love. So people can experience freedom and joy and love and, and uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. And two, that, uh, it will experience a revival of spiritual life. They will love God more. And three, they will experience, they can experience physical and inner healing. Inner healing is healing of the soul, healing of the emotions, of the thinking. And then four, to be free of evil spirit, to be the evil spirit being driven out. And five, to receive spiritual gifts. Now these spiritual gifts were planned by God. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the spiritual gifts will become stronger. Before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, my preaching was totally different from my preaching right now. It's totally different. So God can give us stronger, stronger anointing on the Holy, on the spiritual gifts. And then number six, to have supernatural experiences. Now some people go to heaven. Some people see angels and Jesus. And then when they start to go into the spiritual realm, the supernatural realm, they start to receive words of Jesus. They see angels ministering to people and know that these people will be healed. They can hear from Jesus what they can do in the future. So it's wonderful when they have these supernatural experiences. So I hope that if you have these supernatural experiences, you spend more time, even more time praying, here, uh, waiting on the Lord, loving God. Spend more time. You can be standing or sitting or kneeling. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And gradually you, you see more and hear more. And there are many people who can hear from God and see from God and then they, they receive direction from God. But please remember, don't be proud. If you are proud, it will destroy everything. And then seven, to be raised up to serve God. So God can raise us up to a higher level to serve God. When we pray for people, first, we need to build up a strong relationship with God and turn away from all sins. Sins can bring the evil spirit. And second, we can pray and sing and lead people to believe that God is loving them and help them to love God. We don't need to shout. So we can lead people to enjoy God. So, Father, we thank you. You're loving us right now. Thank you, Jesus. And then we can sing also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. So we can pray and sing to lead people to believe in Jesus. We don't need to shout. Uh, shouting can sometimes help because when people are sleepy, it can wake them up. But we don't have to shout for people to experience the Holy Spirit. Some people think shouting will bring the Holy Spirit. It's not true. Now some people, they work, you know, you wake them up with the shouting and then they open up and then they receive the Holy Spirit. It's possible. But you don't have to shout all the time. Shouting all the time can hurt our voice and we don't need to shout. We can, you know, it's not wrong to shout, but don't shout all the time. And when you shout too much, people will feel pain on their ear. It's more important to pray with feelings. Oh Lord Jesus, you're right here now. You're blessing us right now. We're so happy. And then number three, don't push people. Just touch them lightly. Just touch them lightly. Just touch them. Don't push them. And don't put the hand heavy on them. Just touch them. And falling does not help people. No. But the experience of the Holy Spirit helps them. Very often when people fall under the Holy Spirit, they do experience the Holy Spirit. But some people, they push down. They don't experience anything. They just experience the pushing. 
So we don't want to push people, and also pushing very often is for pride. For this person to show that he has power to, that people will fall under the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not necessary to push people to experience the Holy Spirit. You just lead them to love God and say, God is right here blessing us. Open your heart. Really like God and God will bless you. Hallelujah. We're happy with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With feelings. And then you can bring people to experience the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, I don't want to serve God with people who push people because these people have pride. I don't want to work with people who have pride, who want to show up, show off. I don't, I don't want to work with people like that. I want people to be loving God and lead people to serve God. We don't want people to look at us and say how powerful you are. And also pushing people can make people, you know, distrust this person. They will say, is he really a servant of God? Does he serve himself or does he serve God? So I, I encourage you not to do that. Actually, I would say, don't ever do it. Some people push like this. They push a little bit and the person's head go back, push more, 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 until the person has no choice but to fall down. We don't need to do that. But when we love God, the joy and the power can flow into that person. And then number four, we can ask them if they have experienced the Holy Spirit to help them remember the experience and to go back to the same experience when they pray themselves. So if they say, I feel very joyful, peaceful, I feel burdens go away, I feel love, then tell them, try to go back to the same experience in the future. Now, the experience most people experience is peace, burdens go away, uh, lightness of the body, comfort of the body. These are the most common ones. Now, this is all supported by the Bible, peace. Jesus give us peace and burdens go away and the love of God and then uh, that my body will rest secure so the body can feel p peace and uh, relaxation. Now there is manifestation of the Holy Spirit. People can fall under the power of the Holy Spirit but it's not by our pushing. Sometimes I touch people and they fall down. Sometimes I don't even touch. I just walk to them and then they fall down or just stand there and I pray and they fall down. That's the work of God. We don't have to push them. Actually, when people fall, if there is no one catching them and it's not, not a place he can fall safely, I pull them back, I hold them back so they won't hurt themselves. Some people say if they fall under the Holy Spirit, they won't get hurt. I don't, you know, I think it's possible, but then I, I want to be safe because if one person is hurt, it can be very serious. Okay, now Revelation 1.17 when uh, John saw Jesus, he fell as his, at his feet as though dead. And then Acts 9 verses 3 and 4, when Saul was chasing after Christians and then he saw Jesus on the way to Damascus and then he fell to the ground. So these are examples of people falling under the power of God. But some people say, you are not God. But we have the presence of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, people can fall down. And then how people can experience the Holy Spirit. They can experience peace. Now I don't read through these passages that John 14, 27, peace and burdens taken away. Uh, come to me and I'll give you rest. And then body in rest and comfort that my flesh will also will rest in hope. And then love. The love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given us. So these are the most common ways that we experience the Holy Spirit. Peace, burdens go away body in comfort, love, and then inner healing that, that, <coughs> that <coughs> he'll heal the broken hearted <coughs> and physical healing. <coughs> <coughs> By his stripes we are healed and also demons driven out. In my name they'll cast out demons. So these are ways, common ways that people can experience the Holy Spirit. And God has given me this experience God evangelism. First, we converse with this person and listen to the and respond to the feelings and the needs. Second, we share with uh, how we or someone else had similar problems and experience help from God. So, if they talk about their sickness and their uh, insomnia, their problem with sleeping or their problem with people, we can share with them our similar experience and say, "I." I or someone have experienced something similar that they experience this work of God. 
Now you can watch my videos online. You can look for Pastor Yip, and you can see different people share what they experience. Now many are in Chinese, but there are a number in English also. Uh, you can type, you know, Pastor Yip Y I P, and it would uh, the English uh, videos will show up more when you type Pastor Yip. So uh, we share with them uh, that. We ourselves or someone else have experienced the Holy Spirit. And three, invite Him to receive the laying on our hands. Are you willing that I lay hand on you? Now for me, I've laid hand on so many people. I've seen so many people experience the Holy Spirit that I can tell them many, many examples, many stories. So I hope you keep praying for people and have more experience. And then for pastors, you can pray for your members more and then uh, they can experience the Holy Spirit and you ask them. It's very important to ask them so they know and also you know that you can share with other people. But if people say, I'm experiencing nothing, don't feel offended. And then we'll say, it's okay, it's okay, no problem. Keep praying and God, you experience God more. So don't expect them to say, I have experienced something. If they, if they don't experience anything, that's fine, no problem. Don't, we don't do it for ourselves, we do it for God. And then God will bless you more and when you will pray more. And in the prayer, lead the person to relax and enjoy God and to open the heart to love God. So in the prayer, say, Oh Lord, I love you, I hunger for you. Open the heart to God. And then after the prayer, we'll say, Please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? So we'll ask them, Have you experienced anything during the prayer? If the person experienced some work of God, like peace, we'll say, God, Jesus said, Peace I give to you. If he say, Burdens go away, he say, that Jesus said, all you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. They experience love or inner healing, we quote the Bible verses. Uh, now, most people experience peace and burdens go away and comfort. So you can ask them, these three, if they cannot think of what to, how to answer you. And then seven, we can say, you have experienced the work of God. Do you want God to bless your whole life? And then if He's willing, then we can explain Jesus is God and He has died for our sins to forgive our sins and give us eternal life. Ask if He is willing to accept Jesus as your Savior. And then number nine, and then ask Him to uh, follow this sinner's prayer. Okay, so here I'll say, go through this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you are God. I am sorry for my sins. I have hurt other people's feeling. I have yelled at people. I have lied. I have been greedy and selfish. Thank you for dying on a cross to pay for the penalties of my sins. Please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. Thank you for loving me and giving me eternal life. I love you. I am willing to follow you and love you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now here is so, first I acknowledge who Jesus is. He is God and I'm sorry for my sins and, uh, and name number of sins. And then we ask Jesus to forgive us and give us eternal life. And, and then thank you for loving me and giving me eternal life. And I love you. So my, uh, my willingness to follow God, I love you. And I'm willing to follow you and love you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. So this is how we can lead someone to Jesus. And then number 10. Ask a person if he has sincerely repented of his sins and ask Jesus to be his Savior. Then if he says yes, then we tell them that the Bible promises that he's forgiven and will have eternal life. And then 11, we tell them how to continue to follow God. So this is how he continue to follow God. First, continue to repent of his sins. Continue to trust in Jesus as his Savior. Continue to have a personal relationship with God by reading the Bible, praying, praising God, and going to church to worship God. And four, continue to love God with all his heart and obey God, especially to tell people about Jesus and to follow Jesus. Now, he might not be able to do all this, but we tell them at least that as a Christian, we do this and then serve God. Anything we do to glorify God and bless people are serving God. So these are, um, this is the steps of uh, experience God evangelism. I go through this very quickly. So relationship with people, listen and respond respond to the feelings and needs and share we have similar experience or someone else have similar experience and experience God's help and three invite him to receive laying on our hands and in the prayer help him to relax and open the heart to God hunger for God and after the prayer ask them if they have experienced anything but ask them to close their eyes because if they open their eyes they might be distracted and number six then if they experience something, they explain from the Bible what they experience. This is a work of the Holy Spirit. And then number seven, 
that uh, we say you have experienced the work of God, do you want God to bless your whole life? And then if he is willing to explain that Jesus has died for us, he's God and he died for us, and then are you willing to accept Jesus as your Savior? And then follow, uh, lead him in the prayer of repentance and trusting Jesus as our Savior. And then <coughs> number 10, ask them if they have sincerely repented. And if they have repented, then they are forgiven and have eternal life. And then teach them to follow God. Uh, how he can follow God. To repent of his sins, continue to trust in Jesus as Savior. A personal relationship with God by reading the Bible, praying, praising God and going to church to worship God and continue to love God, obey God, serve God. And then, uh, and then drive out demons now. The next uh, we are almost done now. Drive out demons. How to help people to drive out demons? First, help the person to build a loving relationship with God. Many people who have demons, they, have, they complain to God. They, they don't have a good relationship with God. Uh, and they don't have a good relationship with people. Number two, help the person to repent of all sins and negative thinking, emotions and lifestyle. So it's very important to say no to sins and turn away from the sins. Three, help the person to handle the problems in their life. Like they, uh, they have problems with the husband, with the wife, with the family members, with church members, so, or the neighbors to, to talk with them how to, how to change their life the relationship with these people, how to not to be affected by them and to care for them and pray for them and forgive them. And number four, lead the person in prayer and praise to help him experience the Holy Spirit. So after the person build up the relationship, repent of the sin and handle different problems, then we want to love God and praise God and enjoy God. And then at a certain time we can cast out demons in Jesus' name. And then alternate with prayer and praise to build up the relationship with God. We don't have to keep driving our demons for a long time. We can, you know, alternate with, Hallelujah, praise you, Lord. Sometimes I just lead people to love God and then the demons will come out. We don't have to always cast out demons for the demons to come out. When we love God or rejoice in the Lord, the evil spirit can come out too. And then next, Sometimes we can look into the right eye of the person and tell the person, look into my right eye. Uh, because the right eye has authority. So, uh, and then command the demons to come out. Now, I have done it to people and then immediately people say, immediately, actually they don't say, they cry out. They, they cry out or they are out of control or they are uh, stiff. They, they cannot move because of the evil spirit or they fall down when I look into the right eye that because the e demons can look out through the eyes to us and they are afraid of a spirit-filled Christian and then in the process ask the person what he is experiencing in order to be able to do the suitable thing for him for instance he said I feel something blocking me here then you, uh, if it's uh, same sex you can lay hand on the person on that part if it's not same sex you ask the person to lay hand on her own part where she feel this there's something stuck in there and then you cast out tell him to relax to cast out the demons or help him tell him to blow out the burdens and blow out the evil spirit <sighs> relax now relaxation and believe in Jesus actually helps relax <sighs> and blow out the evil spirit and it has worked for me many times that sometimes people have the evil spirit they are very stiff and then I say relax 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 and then blow out and then suddenly they feel more relaxed but if the person keep fighting they, it, then sometimes the evil spirit don't come out relax believe that God is helping you and then uh, so ask a person what they experience and then to help them. And then nine, teach a person to build up his relationship with God every day and take care of his problems in life. Spend much time praying and casting out demons. This is very important because most people, because of their lifestyle, sometimes it's not uh, possible in one time to cast out all the evil spirit inside him. He has to go home and continue because he still have lifestyle, sinful lifestyle. He need to go home 
and to build up the relationship with God and take care of his problem and enjoy God and to drive out the demons himself. He can drive out the demons himself. Oh, sorry. Okay, now uh, I still have a part. Oh, oh, this is the end already. This is the end already. This below is the questions. Okay, now do you have any questions? Do, do you, does anyone have any questions? We uh, we have a prayer now. Okay, if you have questions, you can you can send to me. Okay, we'll pray now for the Holy Spirit to come and give us the infilling Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, because you love us very much. Thank you, Father. You love us very much. You are loving God. You are caring God. You care about us all the time. I want to enjoy you. I love you. I like you. I really like you. We pray that everyone really like God now. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. I want to serve you. I put you in the first place in my life. God, you're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Help us to love you all the time. Fill us with the Holy Spirit all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Give us a spirit of freedom. Hallelujah. Give us freedom and joy. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, Lord Jesus, take away our burdens. Take away our our sins take away our problems lord jesus we need you thank you jesus thank you jesus you're so wonderful you're so wonderful you're so kind you're so good thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh lord jesus hallelujah thank you jesus so we can relax and enjoy god thank you lord please give us spiritual gifts according to your will Fill us with the Holy Spirit and give us spiritual gifts so we receive the spiritual gifts for ministry to bless people. Not to glorify ourselves, but to glorify you. Lord, we want to glorify you so that people know that you are loving God. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit and give us spiritual gifts to bring growth to the church so that the Christians can grow stronger. We bring more people in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are wonderful, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So I hope you keep the infilling of the Holy Spirit and be used by God and you know make friends with people different places. Go to marketplace, you know, uh, talk to people. Now but now you have to keep a distance. Build up the relationship and then invite them uh, to pray for them and invite them to church. God bless you all and you know uh, stay safe and, and healthy and then Spend more time praying now, praying now, and be prepare for the last days. This could be the last days that, you know. Uh, I hope there will be a peaceful time uh, in front of us that we can still serve God more. I hope there is more time that we can serve God more, that we can bring more people to Jesus. Uh, so I ask for God's strength and guidance for on us all that we can be used by God. If you have experienced the Holy Spirit, keep that. And you can tell your pastor, tell other people, I've experienced this in a, during the prayer. And keep that every time you pray. Okay, God bless you all. Hallelujah. God bless you.